Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you very much for joining us today. The Lord is always glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend time with you in the Word of God. I pray that you were able to cap from the classroom this morning at 10 o'clock a.m. as we took a little closer at uh, some scripture texts in Isaiah 62nd chapter and we actually also backed all the way up to the 59th chapter. Be sure to check out our podcast from the classroom every Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. From the classroom is an extension of our virtual classroom here at Angel Ferguson Ministries College of Ministry and Mentoring Programs. Also on Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock a.m. you can catch our in-depth Bible study via Podbean. That's right. On Saturday mornings 10 o'clock a.m. Angel Ferguson Ministries does a in-depth Bible study via Podbean and it can also be found via iHeartRadio. Look for, like, and subscribe Angel Ferguson's Ministries via Podbean and iHeartRadio. Travel and listen to our podcast along the way. Today is National Prayer Day, which brings us into alignment as we were looking at Isaiah 62 yesterday but I have a question are we expecting to see God's Word are we expecting to see God's Word a couple of weeks ago we did talk about the difference between believing and trusting we taught via Podbean podcast uh, uh, for Bible study. But I have to ask the question, are we expecting to see what God said? Now, in expecting to see what God said, certain things must be put into place. There is an application in which must be followed. The beginning is faith. It begins there. Faith that God is. Faith in His Son. Faith that God raised our Lord and Savior from the dead and He ascended back into heaven from which He sitteth on the right hand of the Father to come to judge the quick and the dead. Then along with our faith comes obedience if we follow what God says then the manifestation will take place we look at the example of Abraham great example magnificent teaching tool also we have the example of Naaman the leper Let's go to 2 Kings first. Let's go to 2 Kings 5th chapter, beginning at the 5th verse. It says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his lord, saying, Thus saith, thus and thus says the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to 
Go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man do have sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Well, first of all, I must point out that they didn't follow instructions because the maid said, would God, my Lord, were the prophet that is in Samaria. So the letter was sent to the king, but it was meant for the prophet. So first of all, obedience, following instructions. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to the balance of life. And today we're asking a question on this National Prayer Day. Are we expecting to see God's word? Are we expecting to see the promises already written? And are we expecting to see what God is saying to us now? Are we expecting to see him be our provider? Our protection? Are we expecting that in him we are a new creature? Are we expecting to see the deliverance, the healing, the breakthrough? Are we expecting to see those things? Because if we are quoting it but not expecting it, then that there's a deficit. Uh, our expectations must be in the right place. Being our expectation is the faith. So our component of faith must be in the right place. It must be rooted and grounded. And when we ask anything in prayer, we should believe that we will receive it. Also, if God gives you a word, a promise that he is going to do something in your life, are we expecting to see the manifestation of it? Or are we just discounting it for mere words? Many a times we are not seeing the manifestation of God's word is because we do not believe it. Uh, not only are we not believing it, but we're not receiving it. And here's something else to throw in the equation. Half the time, we're not following the instructions to get to what God said. That's a lot. That's a whole lot as to why we're not seeing the manifestation of what God said. Also, let's throw something else in there. Because we do not believe, because we're not moving in obedience, we're missing coming into alignment with what God said. We're totally missing it. But then we will say, because we're thinking carnally, God didn't keep his word. God didn't keep his promise. Yes, God did. We didn't believe that he would. We weren't expecting the manifestation to come to pass. Because we are thinking of God in a carnal sense. God is not carnal. God is not man that he should lie. God is sovereign. God is God Almighty. God is spirit and God is truth. His word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which he sent it out to do. And so the individual must get to a place in their life that says, I just have to trust God. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I can't rely on myself. When God gives me a promise, uh, if he says to you, I'm going uh, through you, I'm going to open up this business. 
uh, I'm going to you, you're going to establish a business you you're a business owner well first of all what kind of business owner study to show yourself approved and then how do I get to that how do I get to the business owner well there are some instructions there are some guidelines there are processes and procedures that you must go through and you do that on the guidance of the Holy Spirit step by step and what then you see the manifestation of what God said but if we are thinking that God's promise is going to plop out out of the sky and boom one day you're a business owner that's not the way it works Abraham Abraham had to follow the instructions of God in order for the manifestation of what God said would come to pass but let's get back over to Naaman first okay so over in 2nd Kings the fifth chapter we are now at the eighth verse it says and it was so when Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king saying wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel once again following instructions in this season for those who have been giving a word of promise it is imperative it is oh my gosh it is so important that we uh in all our getting get an understanding mm -hmm. in all your ways acknowledge him it is so important that we follow instructions that we do not lean to our own understanding that we do not try to do our do it our way do not try to cut corners uh, whatever God has instructed you to do do that do not try and cut corners do not try to skip steps follow the instructions according to what has been given unto you and do not try to follow someone else's instructions those are their instructions that's what God gave unto them all right verse 9 says now Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha and Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying go and wash in the Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean but 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 Naaman was wroth he was upset why first of all because once again he was a man of valor he was prominent in his country in the king's house he was a warrior so he was upset okay we might think that we're too valuable to follow some basic instructions but the key is once again is to have faith and to move in obedience verse 11 says but Naaman was wroth and went away and said behold I thought see carnal carnal lean not to your own understanding carnal thinking he says I thought he would surely come out to me that's a, that's the first thing because the prophet sent a message so the first issue that Naaman has is that he look I came all this way first your king is all upset then they send me to somebody else and you won't even come out to talk to me second thing he says he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and so our perception of how things are going to go mm -mm, we can't lean to our own understanding trust the process of God so we have to cast down our own thoughts our own imaginations 
the way we think that it's supposed to happen, the way that we think it's supposed to transpire. And we should just get to a point in our lives and say, you know what, God, whatever you say, I'm going to trust you because you know, you know the way. As a matter of fact, hey, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. I, I'm going to trust your way. I'm going to trust your process. You know what is best. Because you know what's ahead. And I don't. So Naaman assumed that the prophet would come out to him and talk. And he assumed of how it was going to transpire based off of how it tra how it goes in his country, in Syria. Our ways are not God's ways. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. For his ways are as high as the heavens are above the earth. So when I come in with this thing, listen, I came expecting because I heard about the God the true and living God. And I came expecting something from God. But I have to put my ideologies aside. I have to put my way of thinking and doing things aside. I have to put my perception aside. If I come in with my own ideas, I don't need God. If I can heal myself, I don't need God. I don't need to come to God. I don't need to ask for a healing. If I can deliver myself out of a situation, I don't need to come and ask him to deliver me. If I can give myself a breakthrough, listen, if I can snap my fingers and the, uh, uh, the, the flow of cash come falling down and... Uh, Every all bills paid and there's an overflow and if I can do that on my own I don't need God but guess what I can't if I can snap my finger and knowledge comes I don't need God but it does not happen that way and I need God and so if we're going to expect to see God's word we must get to a point in our lives that we acknowledge that we need God Okay, let's go further. Verse 12 says, well, let's finish up verse 11. Let's start at the beginning of 11. It says, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. So he had already fixed in his mind how this thing is going to go. Do you not know we do that? We fix in our minds how God's promise is going to pan out, how it's going to work out. Oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and I'll say this and they'll say this or I'll do this and then that will happen. And so we get disappointed when it does not happen the way we imagined it to happen. That's why we have to cast down every thought and every high imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I think I'm preaching right about now. I know I'm the first partaker about what I'm saying. So listen, I must shut down the way I think it's going to happen and say God have your way because when it does not happen the way I think it should happen the way I imagine I should have it should happen then I'm going to find myself in a place of disappointment with God which brings in the component of doubt because to me I cannot imagine it happening any other way so when God is doing it his way, I can't see it because that's not the way I imagined it. That's good. That's real good. That's real good. All right. Now let's go to verse 12. Are not Abana and Fafar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Listen, I just, I just expounded on that scripture before I read it. He had 
an idea of what should take place. And therefore he was disappointed when it did not happen the way he thought it should happen. And he began to walk away from God. He began to walk away from the healing that he came to get. Oh my God, help me, help me right here. Help me. I, I want to calm myself down. Okay, so you come to God for healing. You come to God for deliverance. You come to God uh, because you have a desire in your heart and it's something that you want to do. Take, for instance, David. David had a desire in his heart to build a, a temple for the Lord. But when God said to him, you should not do it, but uh, your heir, Solomon, who he hadn't even met Solomon's mother yet, he shall build me a house because your hand has been uh, filled with blood from wars. David did not become so disappointed that he turned to walk away and say, never mind. No, he rejoiced because God thought so much about him, considered him enough that it would be done through an heir. And so he submitted himself for the Holy Spirit to give him the instructions and go about how to get the provisions together for the house for the temple of the Lord and so you come to God and uh, you have a desire of your heart that you want to do something you come to God for deliverance for healing and 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 you you have this plan you have this desire there's something you need done in your life whether it's with your children or with your marriage or with the business with the workplace with your home with the ministry you come to God but we must come to God broken, giving him the opportunity to make us whole, to put the pieces together. But when we come to God already whole, we're coming to him uh, with an idea with the imagery and 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 God this is what I want and 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 this is how I want you to do it and here's my plans God and and you just work out my plans I can hear my spiritual sister prophetess Yolanda often laughing at me and tell me and say girl when are you going to stop telling God what you want to do because I do Sometimes I'd be like, mm -mm, nope, I don't feel like doing that. Nope, uh, I ain't doing that. And I'm talking to her. And see, that's the best thing about real spiritual sisterhood, the brotherhood of Christ, the body of Christ, is they will tell you in loving kindness, when are you going to stop telling God what you want to do and let God have his way? So Naaman went, and Naaman had an idea of how it was going to be and when it did not happen the way he thought it was going to happen he doubted and he turned to, to walk away he was angry and he was upset but he had someone with him that corrected him verse 13 says and his servants came near and spake unto him and said my father if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing wouldest thou not have done it how much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean. So in other words, even if he would have told you to do something else, would you have done it? Because you have set in your mind the way you want it to be done. But God has a plan. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you for a good and expected end. I already know. Try my plan try my plan let's do it my way I am the true and living God I am Jehovah Jireh I am Jehovah Nisi I am Jehovah Rapha I am the I am I am the beginning I am Alpha and I am Omega I know the beginning and I know the end I already know the outcome so try it my way because somewhere along the line, you have tried it your way. You thought that being a man of valor was going to cleanse you. Nope. You thought works was going to bring you closer to the kingdom of heaven and of salvation. Nope. 
It is by faith through Jesus Christ that we have salvation. So we have our, our, own, our own ideas of how we think something is supposed to happen. But God has a perfect plan. We have to give his plan the benefit of the doubt. We have to believe his plan by faith. All right. Verse 14 says, Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. So, as you can see, when we follow by faith the instructions of God, then we can come into the manifestation of his words. But we must have our... We must have our mindset. We must come in with an expectation. I, I'm, I'm going to see God's word. I believe God's word. I believe the word that he revealed to me. He used his servant to give me instructions on what to do. And it's not that I'm going to believe the servant, but I believe the God that instructed the servant to tell me this. Because I'm seeking something. Let me say this right here. Whatever God gives the vessel to say to you is already something that he has put in your heart as a desire. God knows what you need. And he will put us in alignment. So you have, you have a prayer. Your prayer is between you and God. Your petition is between you and God. You're praying within. You're in the secret place of the Most High. You're praying about this thing. And you haven't told anybody. It's between you and God. That's why it's so important to just stop talking so much. Just pray between you and God. Unless he tells you to uh align yourself with somebody else where two or three touching an agreement uh, unless you do that but okay you've prayed about it it's in your heart it, it, it's what you want to happen right and so you're praying about it and it's between you and God he will send a vessel to tell you about that prayer that you prayed that God heard your prayer and that he's going to honor your prayer he's going to fulfill that which you prayed now, this is where we go in error. Because then we begin to imagine how we want it done. Let God do the work. Let him do it. Let him fix the situation. Let him work it out. We get in the way too much. And when it's not working the way we want it to work... We get upset. We doubt God. We miss the blessing. We miss the breakthrough. Because it's not happening the way we imagined it to happen. And of course we have the, the greatest example. Abraham. Over in Genesis 12, it says, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Abraham did what God told him to do. Verse 6 and 7 is the fulfillment of what God said. So see, he had to follow instructions too. 
we're coming to a close <laughs> that 30 minutes goes by so fast but be sure to tune in next tuesday at 12 30 p.m for more of the balance of life tuesday wednesday and thursday 12 30 p.m don't forget saturday morning bible study with none other than Podbean. have a blessed day